the truth of the matter is that uh, we have problems with power. Uh, first of all, there is not enough power to power the industry or the industrialization uh, plants. Secondly, the quality of power that we get, even from what we are able to generate, is not good enough and often leads to um, higher costs and inefficiency in, in our industries. We all know that we need reliable power at reasonable rates. Every partner state has invested in power generation to meet this goal. One of the concerns expressed by the private sector in doing business in East Africa is on the high cost of energy in this region. In this week's episode, we take a look at these concerns and how the governments are addressing this. Hello and welcome to East African Voices. I'm your host, Laban Cliff Serio. Today, we begin our show here at the Rwanda Special Economic Zone, which is an area allocated by the government of Rwanda to manufacturers as an incentive to them to operate. Africa is the worst of continent in the world in terms of access and availability to energy. A century and a quarter after the invention of the electric bulb, most of the continent still remains in the dark. According to the World Bank, the three key concerns when it comes to African energy are low access, insufficient capacity, poor reliability and high cost. Many manufacturers say that the cost of power feeds into their cost of production, raising the eventual cost of their products. Cement manufacturer East African Portland is a prime example of this. Our um, total cost of power uh, in, in relation to our revenue is 20%. All of it goes into power. Uh, the total manufacturing cost um, in terms of uh, the need for power and fuel is, takes about 40% of, of of the of the budget of our manufacturing cost into those two items. So we consume a huge amount of power and we cannot um, grow and we cannot be efficient uh, if the cost or if the, the quality of power and, and, and the amount of power that we need is not readily available. The same case applies to Aza Millers, one of East Africa's largest companies which manufactures food products in Rwanda, Burundi and Tanzania. That's the big challenge. Okay, Tanzania power is uh, cheaper, uh, Kenya also is cheaper. So I think power is uh, also a big uh, issue, in the, especially in the landlocked. These two companies describe the plight of many of their peers in the region. We are not internationally competitive and as long as that is the state of affairs, we will not be able to grow industries, we will not be able to compete internationally and we will always come second, no matter what we do, in relation to our impact. The focus again tends to be on the generators. I think we should be looking at the value chain. Are we producing at the most cost-efficient tariff? All of us. And then if we are, what is making uh, electricity um, costly? You speak to the manufacturers um, in Uganda, it's not so much about cost, but if we're talking about competitiveness, we're talking about cost because we operate in a global community. In a recent business conference in East Africa that convened industry players from the region, it will emerge that the concerns of the private sector on the high cost of energy are well captured in the highest state office. We will not have growth without energy. The two go hand in hand. And I think as a, as, as, as a region, and uh, as you've said, as Kenya, we have acknowledged that we need to be able to expand our energy capacity in order to be able to uh, um, achieve the kind of growth rates that we expect uh, in 2020 and, and beyond. And we are making big investments there. How reliable is this power? Let's have a look at a power country focus. Here in Kenya, we opened a new 140 megawatt plant recently. Another 140 megawatt plant will come online next month. 
within the next 36 months, we will have an additional 5,000 megawatts of power on the grid. In Uganda, the major hydroelectricity project at Karuma and Isimba will bring 1,200 megawatts of power to citizens and business. Once complete, Tanzania's gas-powered plant at Kinyeresi will leave our brothers with a substantial new supply of clean energy. Rwanda can report new hydroelectric projects as well as an aggressive program to power its homes and business with a methane gas fund found in Lake Kiv. Rwanda generates 86.3% of its energy through biomass to account for an installed capacity of 126 megawatts with 22.5% connectivity rate. Rwanda's advantage from the rolling hills places it at a key position to leverage on higher generation and carbon dioxide and methane gas deposits in Lake Kivu. Little was known to private sector uh, operators that they could also invest in energy development uh, ventures. Uh, time came when we started getting stressed on, on, on the grid uh, and, and government saying, calling out to say we will now want or need private sector people to come and invest in because why else, why would government invest in, in energy generation if private sector uh, people can go in and generate the energy? So it is not to say that there are no opportunities, there are opportunities, but there was not much known about those opportunities. Uganda's total generation is spurred by its positioning at the source of the Nile. A company that has led this generation for the past 12 years is ESCOM Uganda, a subsidiary of South Africa-based ESCOM. It runs power plants in the country and is the biggest producer of hydropower in Uganda. Even though there's a number of um, generators that are on the Nile, we are the first one. So our reliability does not only impact the grid, but it impacts the other generators as well, which uh, at the end of the day comes back to the grid. We have two plants and uh, the one plant, the older plant, is the one that can ramp up and down that is more flexible. The newer plant is not as flexible as the older plant. What also has helped us is uh, the fact that the water that is available is less than the installed capacity. Kenya's demand for power is very close to its installed capacity. The government's focus to inject 5,000 megawatts to Kenya's power output by 2017 to unleash even faster economic growth, which is expected to raise power demand to 15,000 megawatts by 2030. For the first time in Kenya, in the month of October, geothermal generated more energy than the hydros, believe it or not. That's how well now we are doing that we are moving away from being uh, hydro, dominated by hydro, to increasing the geothermal, and that is helping us then in controlling even our reservoirs. The oil discovery in the northern area of Kenya, Trukana, is a game changer in the move towards powering East Africa. The project has also seen the establishment of multinational farms in Kenya, such as Talo Oil to East Africa. The country has also tabled a plan for nuclear generation, although some have called into question the cost and safety of this method of power generation. Tanzania's natural gas fines in Mutwara region adds an extra source of power from the already existing hydro and geothermal. The region has seen Chinese investors flocking to invest in the fines. Gas is also a, bit, a little bit expensive than hydro. But the hydro is not very reliable in this country, you know, because we have had hydro for so many years. But the drought is also is also causing us a lot of problems, and therefore we are not relying so much on on, a, on a hydro. Further, the wealth of resources these countries have places the governments of individual countries on the spotlight. Our leaders, or some of our leaders, don't understand. Uh, it you need uh, basically four things. Uh, to exploit uh, um, a resource like um, gas, uh, you need um, cash, uh, you need uh, management, you need technology. Fourth, fourthly, and most important, you need the resource. 
Burundi also suffers from the lack of cheap, reliable and available power. The country is looking to leverage on current dam construction in rural Burundi. We have been going in of a war situation whereby the dams existing were not maintained. Equally, um, there were no really projects in that particular area for that long, more than 15 years, can you imagine? Now, five projects are coming at the same time, but they are starting at the same time as well, but they take time <laughs> to have them operate. It's argued that the low investment by the private sector may just make such projects a mirage, as the capital needed may just be too expensive to sustain. Africans in general are not uh, investing in, in, in energy. You know, people coming from big countries are the ones used to do this kind of projects. They're the ones to fund or to maybe be interested as private. So the privates are not really in that area because it, it, it asks a lot of capital and it takes long to re, 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 re call back to your, 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 your investment. The country's economy is expected to grow at an annual rate of 5% over the next decade and the availability of reliable power is expected to catalyze this growth. For investors here in Burundi, a key concern is on the power reliability, which often experiences outages due to lack of infrastructural upgrade for more than 15 years. We're going on a break right now. When we return, we find out solutions to this problem. And is it time that East Africa thought of a different energy mix? Stay with East African Voices. Welcome back. We're now at Narubare Power Project, which is right here at the source of the Nile in Jinja, Uganda. Now, this escom owned project generates about 180 megawatts to the Uganda national grid. But just as we're about to find out, this is a project that not only benefits Ugandans, but East Africans in general. The movement of these turbines signifies the amount of work applied to ensure electricity is finally generated. A venture that has not easily come by after all. Narubale is installed with 10 generating units. Each is of 18 megawatts, giving us 180. And the Kira has 5 generating units, each of 40 megawatts. That's giving us 200 megawatts. That's the total of 380 installed capacity, which uh, ESCOM looks at. Even as East African countries forge towards a common integration, what is the opportunity for integrating its energy system? The reason we need to connect all these power pools and have really smart grids is because there's a question between demand and supply. Now, Kenya has just come up with a plan to do 5,000 megawatts. Um, I think the worry on some people's side is who will consume this power? Where will it be sent? Who will, who will pay for it? I mean, that's a wrong worry because if we connect the power pools, you've got a whole area of East Africa which is defi de deficient in power and it can be shared. Now if another region starts another power project or whatever, it could be shared. And this is why the whole, because power cannot be stored, power has to be conveyed, it has to be used and spent. Seeing the level of diversity in the energy generation mix, the Eastern Power Pool and the East African community are in the process of developing an East African Power Master Plan. The plan is spread across 20 years and looks into the interconnection of power systems of Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania and is technically feasible and economic viable as growth demands over the next 20 years. What would be their main or, 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 or primary customer? Would it be their own country when they have problems or will they start with the commitment to the community. I don't think those have been ironed out in the absence of the power pool, the East African power pool. Though what is the practicality of this interconnectivity on the ground? The national grid on which we supply 
is extended or is connected to uh, the Kenyan grid. Uh, also, we, we are happy that also we, we, we play a, a bigger role in terms of the stability of the grid because vice versa, Kenya helps us to stabilize as also we help it to stabilize. In terms of incidents whereby we need support, we can start from the Kenya system and that means we work hand in hand. That's the extension at which we are cooperating. This is one area where I think there is great potential uh, for, 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 for both uh, growth and potential investment uh, from the private sector in an area that I would encourage them to continue looking at. Let me say it is not just to, 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 to the Kenyan investors. We, we are working to make sure we can tap into that as well. You have a market, you have demand, all it needs is now to create a supply of, of, of energy and that would be uh, a good area. The African Development Bank notes that for power generation to gain ground, institutions and infrastructure play a central role. The bank has invested over 60% of funds disbursed to African countries on energy projects. You can't develop in the dark. Setting up a manufacturing industry really doesn't make sense unless you have competitive pricing for energy. Um, for schools, for hospitals, uh, for everything, we need, we, need, we need good price energy. The challenge is upon member states to enhance the availability of infrastructure for the distribution of power. We need to improve on the transmission and distribution um, sector, you know, the, 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 the wires and the cables and the transformers. And, and we need to start thinking about distributed power because it's not just about big power plants anymore. That's um, in the old days. You know, uh, the, the old days of power was big power plants. These days, distributed power is, is more than 25% of the power worldwide. That means that a factory, you know, can put panels on the roof. A dairy could generate electricity from, from uh, biogas and, and, and produce its own electricity. And this should be allowed, this should be encouraged. AFDB's $384 million electricity highway from Ethiopia to Kenya is expected to add on the already existing efforts of buffering the current electricity generation capacity in the region. The project launched two years ago is part of Ethiopia's ambitious generation of 10,000 megawatts by 2025. Africa has tremendous energy sources, fuel sources, whether it be hydro, uh, whether it be water resources, whether it be wind, whether it be gas. Uh, we have a lot of potential uh, sources of fuel for energy which we're not yet exploiting fully. Hopefully we can in the future. In a recent stakeholders meeting with the East African Business Council, the question on renewable energy was debated on at large. As it emerged, We really need to um, make a space at the table for both the new renewables, which is wind, geothermal and geothermal, geothermal is, is moving very quickly um, and solar and we need to modernize the traditional sources of energy um, the, the woody biomass and charcoal because these are the major sources of energy which which haven't been given attention it's not easy to push uh, from hydro to other sources because other sources also have their own uh, effects for example if we go nuclear it has the reactors you are using, they have to be handled in a special way. And if you go thermal, these other renewable, these other fuels you are using, they are also bound to, 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 get, to, to get finished because these are, these, are, these are, you are using these fuels and you are burning fuels. So do financiers have any bias in selecting projects to finance, be it renewable or non-renewable energy? We need as much energy sources as we can. Renewable is renewables is obviously more sustainable. However, there are some basic sources of fuel that Africa has and it needs to exploit. So I think we need a balanced approach. Nonetheless, the call for the use of clean energy in the move towards generating affordable, reliable and adequate power has got the private sector living in expectation. In the meantime, to develop alternatives, source of energy like solar, by you know, we can uh, maybe use solar as, a, as, a, as an alternative. But as you know, it is also a new technology, not well uh, uh, controlled, and as well it is expensive. 
What the private sector will champion for is a keen interest to ensure that the East African nations forge towards a common electricity generation plan. We see great potential for private sector involvement. We are just waiting to see, for example, some of the new gas fines that uh, uh, have, been, have been made. Once we establish um, reasonable quantities, our first priority, and we have said clearly, is not the export of that gas, but the use of that gas. As a form of public and private partnership, the involvement of the private sector will go a long way to curbing the energy deficiency in the region. Take for instance... In our case, we are looking at um, uh, power own generation from our waste heat uh, uh, discharge from our kiln, uh, our furnace, which uh, produces uh, quite a lot of heat uh, and hot air, which we can convert into uh, power. And um, already we have a tender out there right now for that project and we will be expect to generate at least um, 30 to 40 percent of our power requirements from that. The, the, the great thing about that is that it will be green energy, completely green energy and it will be completely free other than the initial cost of investing. Right now in Kenya, 16 percent of the power is already generated by the private sector through generators and because they have to have their own power because when the power goes off, um, they generate their own power. I think that's, that's good and that should be encouraged. And rather than saying, okay, we're gonna have 5,000 megawatts made by some big generation company, we should say, well, that's part of the plan, but the other plan is to encourage um, companies to produce their own power because that benefits everybody. One of the issues that I know the, the, the Ministry is doing is to ensure that even if we were bringing the private sector uh, to, to generate power, but we want to keep the tariff that they, they will be selling to the grid to be what, it, what, the, what the Ministry wants to, to be as tariff of Tanzania. We want to maintain it as low as possible. In the third regional infrastructure review of existing power projects in East Africa that was recently held in Nairobi, the government and a council of ministers committed to joining the efforts towards the overall goal of ensuring East Africa remains competitive. I wish to reaffirm the commitment of the council of ministers in ensuring that we fast track implementation of the priority infrastructure projects and such implementation is enabled with a renewed vigor and determination. The Council further commits to deepen collaboration with the private sector and our development partners. This focus at the end of it all is to provide affordable, sustainable and reliable supply of energy that will stimulate high and sustained economic growth leading to higher incomes, increased employment, and reduced poverty. We will be following the commitments of the individual East African countries in their quest to provide available and affordable sources of energy in East Africa so as to encourage the growth of industry in, in the region. That's why we leave it at on a look at energy in East Africa. As always, we value your feedback. Find us on Facebook or feel free to follow us on Twitter at EA Voices. You can write to us. Our email address is on your screen. On behalf of the team that made this production possible from us right here in Nairobi, till the same time next week, it's goodbye.